What is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Welcome, everyone, to Issues of Faith. 56 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote what is maybe one of the most famous letters um, that has been written in a very long time. He wrote a letter from the Birmingham jail. It was 56 years ago, April of 1963. And it was in response uh, to a letter that was written by eight clergy members from white churches in Birmingham who were basically saying, uh, don't follow Dr. King, he's an outsider, and wait, wait to fight for civil justice. What relevance does that letter that Dr. King wrote those years ago have for churches today? And that is what I want to talk about. And so happy to have with us Dr. LaRotha Williams, Associate Professor of African American and Public History at TSU. Mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, also follow you on Twitter. <laughs> follow Dr. Williams on Twitter. This letter, letter from a Birmingham jail, what are your big picture thoughts? This is an eight page letter. I'm going to kind of go through it. But big picture thoughts, what, what about that? Um, I first encountered it in grad school, and, and we're mindful in grad school we read a lot of stuff. Um, but as I sit here with you today, I can't think of anything more remarkable that I read. Just um, double spaced, that letter is about 20 pages, which is a typical grad student paper, but it is magnificent, and, and we're mindful that he wrote it in the margins of newspapers and using scrap paper and so forth. And then finally, um, SCLC attorneys brought him some tablets to finish it up. Um, it was written while he was in jail. Right. And he's responding to an open letter that was published in Birmingham, Alabama in the newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. And as I said, by eight local white clergymen in response to civil rights demonstrations taking place at that time. Mm -hmm. So Dr. King was arrested. Mm -hmm. He was coming into Birmingham from outside of Birmingham mm -hmm. and was wanting to protest. These eight clergy, very respected clergy from all different denominations say, what, what do they say? I guess you take it from there. Um, they offer um, several criticisms. First, he's an outsider and he's protesting, which they argue, um, creates a violent atmosphere in Birmingham. Um, they are critical of his, 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 his the, the conflict that nonviolent protests is, is, is causing, the tension that it causes. Um, and, and this letter is a response to that. In essence, he says first, you know, and the big question is they're, they're asking, why are you here? And he's saying, I'm here because injustice is here. And then one of the more remarkable things, <coughs> excuse me, that he does in this is that he links the injustice that is occurring in Birmingham to injustice all around the country. I encourage everyone to read both letters. I encourage you to read the letter, it's called A Call for Unity, that was written by um, these white clergy, again, of all denominations. It's, it's a well-written letter, and if you received it while you're in jail, um, I, you know, I don't know what you would do. The response from Dr. King is remarkable. And he starts out by say, saying, seldom do I pause to answer criticism of my work and ideas. Uh, my secretaries would have little time for anything if I did that. And in this day of Twitter and everything, so he, he's saying, I'm, I'm criticized a lot, and I don't often answer, but your letter uh, rose to the level that I'm going to answer. And he starts out by saying, why Birmingham? Because he's called an outsider. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I should indicate why I'm in Birmingham. And, and what does he say, why Birmingham? Because injustice is there. And when we consider Birmingham, I, I, I can't remember who said it, but um, they describe Birmingham as being the id of Southern segregation. And, and we're mindful of the violence that was there. A lot of the violence was um, led by um, Bull Connor, Eugene Bull Connor, who's supposed to be in charge of public safety. Um, 
But when King comes along, the critique that emerges is that, uh, you know, our African American population, uh, they are okay, they are fine with the way things are, and there are these outsiders that are coming in that are, that is causing trouble. They portray him as an outsider. Right. He says Birmingham is probably the most thoroughly segregated city in the United States. And in the fourth paragraph of this letter, he says, I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and uh, not be concerned by what happens in Birmingham. And then the very famous uh, line, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And it, um, he does something, he says something that's really profound in this, because if you read further along, he, he, he talks about all forms of oppression and how they are, are, are very much linked. He links our freedom, or the freedom that I enjoy as an individual, to the freedom that folks around him, that his neighbor, um, and, and that his neighbors enjoy. So, um, you know, it's a really interesting response to their call for unity. He's basically responding by saying, it's, um, what I'm doing here is basically issuing a call for unity um, in my own way. And it goes beyond just Birmingham. Correct. Injustice in Birmingham should concern people everywhere. Exactly. And, exactly. and so he broadened it out and answered that criticism. Another criticism they said is, why don't you just wait? Maybe right now isn't the time. Um, you know, why didn't you give the new city administration time to act? Um, and, and they say this is untimely. How does he respond to that? Um, in the eyes of oppressors, there's never really a good time for protests. And, and in response to the whole idea of waiting, waiting for the appropriate time. Um, African Americans first arrived in um, what was British North America in 1619. And now we're looking at 1963. You've been waiting a long time for some change, and the change came in increments, but still, nevertheless, um, he argues in his letter that we've been waiting long enough, the time to do right is now. We have waited more than 340 years for our constitutional and God-given rights, mm -hmm. and he says, he has found freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Privileged seldom give up their privileges voluntarily. Mm. And that is still something that resonates today, I think, very much so. And then he gets into the types of laws, right? There mm -hmm. are just laws and unjust laws. And this gets complicated. How do we determine what is just and unjust? Well, he, in it, he, um, and, I, and I thought that his, his, his description of unjust laws was remarkable. It's basically, he talks about an unjust law being a law that's passed by the majority that they're not beholden to. And that sums up what was going on in Birmingham um, perfectly. And he argued that the church had a responsibility to stand up to unjust laws, which he also defines as immoral. Um, he knows that when he brings that up, you, you shouldn't be, have to follow an unjust law, that the very next question is, well, how can you determine what a just law is? And that mm -hmm. definition that you said, mm -hmm. that's, that's what he said. A just law is one that a majority uh, compels a minority to follow, mm -hmm. and that majority is willing to follow itself. Because what was happening was there were laws being passed that the majority weren't willing to follow. Right, right. And I think, um, and this letter has a lot of powerful themes in it, but I think the, one of the most compelling is the, um, is you get to the part in that where he starts to call out the church, I guess, for its inactivity. Um, and he also argues that, you know, their, 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 their silence is dangerous and he suggests that it's almost being complicit with what is going on. What King is calling for is an, an activist church, if you will, one that was concerned with more than just the 
spiritual well-being of its congregation and the community, one that was thoroughly engaged in equality in the community, in, in, in the world. What he says is that the church used to be an activist church. Mm -hmm. It used to be that, um, obviously many years ago prior to writing this, that, that when Christians came into a community, those in power were concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and he says that he felt as he embarked on this that Christian leaders would be some of his biggest supporters, mm -hmm. but he didn't find that. And, and, and that's another underlying tone. Um, theme, if you will, um, his disappointment, and and I can understand as a civil rights leader, you are going to get some criticism, but I think the criticism cuts a little bit deeper when it's coming from members of your own group, your own training. So you have these clergymen, these rabbis who are in um, Birmingham who criticize him publicly, we for the world, and I can. Imagine him being in jail and having all these things going through his head and saying, hey, I need to respond to these criticisms. And as you read through the letter, it appears as though he went point by point to address everything that they said. Um, so it, in it, it's a letter that responds to the criticism, but it's also one that chastises them for um, the way they are moving, if you will, in Birmingham, the way they are responding in Birmingham. He was in that initial letter um, categorized as an extremist. Mm -hmm. And he writes, I was initially disappointed at being categorized as an extremist. Um, I gradually gained a measure of satisfaction from that label. Was Jesus not an extremist? Exactly. So he turns it around. And, and labor, labels can be used to, to control our behavior. When you think extremists, you know, it's, it's, that there's something that makes you feel as though the per person is operating outside of the norms. But in it, he says that it, it's, he, he makes a suggestion that it's okay to be an extremist for good, as opposed to being an extremist for things that are immoral. So he takes that label and he transforms it to something in, in that, uh, that he embraces something that is empowering to him. And that's essentially, we're, we're through a, a good portion of the letter, but the mm -hmm. next portion of the letter, he really talks about churches, and he talks about his, his hope that churches would be with him and his, I guess, disappointment at what was occurring. Mm -hmm. And I want to I wanna really drill down into that segment and then kind of what can we take away from that today. Um, but we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back and, and drill down into that next segment. Take a break. Uh, mm -hmm. Be back right after this. Mm -hmm.